Okay, continuing on. Um, I'm a little tired today, uh, so if I am a little bit slow, I apologize. Um, okay, so faith makes us heirs, not the law. Romans 4.13 For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Amen. Again, we are reminded that justification is unto an inheritance. Abraham was to be the heir of the world, and so are we. God is going to subject everything to the sons of men. Even the heavens and the angels will be subjected to the regenerated, transformed, glorified, built-up elect of God who are shining with God. That is our future, to be the sons of God in glory. This is due to justification. Amen. Romans four fourteen through 15 For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Some people try to think that the Jewish people couldn't inherit the land because they didn't keep the law. They, they heard that gets a little confusing. Clearly, for not keeping the Sabbaths and feasts and maintaining the priesthood, we see that they are or they were eventually cast out of the land and taken captive. The law was given not to individuals, but to the nation of Israel. Amen. The nation was to keep the law in order to stay in the land. That is true. However, dis being disobedient as an individual to the law could not disqualify you from your, inher from your ultimate inheritance, which is by faith. All genuinely faithful believing Israelites who believed in the promise of the seed and believed in the need for salvation through blood will find themselves resurrected into the land eventually. Amen. They will enjoy their inheritance even if they lived in a time when the nation was being cast out and disciplined due to national disobedience. Amen. The disobedience that you see in the Old Testament that brought judgment was the national disobedience. The disobedience that was so extreme is eventually brought, it eventually brought them as a nation into judgment was actually the fault of the leadership. The leadership appointed high places of worship brought in worshiping of idols, and even killed the priests and the prophets. However, individuals were still justified by faith. Amen. This can be proven by the fact that there were times when the nation had no way to keep the feasts, as there was no temple due to judgment. Yet Daniel and everyone who was faithful in Babylon was protected and blessed. They were justified by faith and walking with God. Amen. Naomi went out of the land because of the famine and remained faithful even though she wasn't keeping feasts. As an individual, you were justified by faith. Amen. However, as a nation, they could be disciplined due to failure to keep the Mosaic Covenant. Paul tells us in Galatians that this was given 400 years after the everlasting covenant made to Abraham, which, it, which establishes Abraham's seed as the heir, as the heirs, and could not disannul or add conditions to the everlasting covenant to make it of no, no effect, Galatians 3.17. As Abraham's seed walking by faith, you are an heir according to the promise, and you cannot be disqualified 
by failure to keep the law. Amen. Your inheritance is secure in Christ. That is a matter of individual. A matter for, that is a matter for the individual. Sorry. Again, in the time that the nation, the nation of Israel was under law, they were disciplined or blessed based on their national failure or ability to keep that covenant. They were functioning as a teaching model to show the nations that it's not going to work to just be godly. You need Christ in your midst. Not only that, you need to be remade. You need a covenant where God writes his law in your hearts. Or even better, you need to be regenerated and made a member of Christ, a member of the body of Christ. Amen. Because the law works wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. I used to believe that this meant that the law made God angry at me. However, I now believe that the law makes man angry at God. We're, we'll see in Romans 8 that the carnal mind is enmity against God. Romans 8, 7. This is the mind, of, this is the mind set upon the flesh and its performance. It is the mind of a person who persists under the law and becomes hostile to God. When you're working under the law, you're working for a wage, and you think you've put God in your debt by your own righteousness. Amen. You're working, and the reward is counted in your mind as a debt where God owes you something. Yet you find that if you don't keep the whole of the law, you've broken the whole thing. So you nullify the wage and you get nothing. You start to get mad because you think it's unfair and God is not paying you what you think you what you think is your due. You become more and more frustrated. This is the law working wrath in you. Amen. You can't serve mammon and the Lord. You'll love the one and hate the other. Matthew 6, 24. The law is a mammon system where you are trying to work for a wage where you are exchanging your effort for blessing. That whole principle is ruled out. We cannot go that route or it will work wrath. Amen. It will make you frustrated and angry. It doesn't make God angry. He's already revealed his wrath. He's not mad at you if you are struggling with the law as a believer. He's sad for you and, cannot, and can't wait for you to give up and really rest in the gospel and his grace. Amen. Where there is no law, there is no transgression. Romans 7 says, I was alive once, but when the law came, sin revived and I died. There's a reason for this. The law actually makes the sin problem worse. It makes it more profound because the flesh takes advantage of you and deceives you. We'll see more of this in later chapters. Amen.